Hey guys, Meteor Rebel Chris Tomer here with this Friday mountain weather update, and it is a powder day across Utah and Colorado. This is Solitude, a ski area up there in Big Cottonwood Canyon, and they are reporting uh, over a foot of new snow in the last 24 hours, and potentially a foot or more over the last three, three and a half days of snowfall. And you could still pick up another two, three, four inches of snow up there in Big Cottonwood Canyon. Um, let me take you over to uh, Alta Ski Area. And Alta's reporting uh, 18 inches in the last 24 hours, so it got absolutely nailed. Um, a storm total of 28, but it's over 28 when you look at the last three, three and a half, four days. Um, so this this whole storm cycle has played out as expected with significant amounts of snowfall in uh, Utah. All right, let me take you to... Uh, let me take you to Winter Park and show you what it looks like up here in Colorado. We picked up a few inches of new snow, and I think six, seven inches over the last couple of days up there at Winter Park, but you can see the sun trying to break through up there. And um, out of it, up at Big Sky, it is crystal clear up there at Big Sky, so all the snow stayed south of there, and Wyoming got a few inches of snow as well. But a lot of this was in um, Utah and uh, Colorado. All right, let me take you over to... Um, I want to show you the water vapor satellite imagery here. Give you the lay of the land. So oranges and reds are going to be your drier air in the low levels. Your moisture's in the whites and the blues. A couple of things to point out here. So <clears throat> there's our main storm system right there. There's a little trailing area of low pressure right here. Tiny little area of low pressure. Talked about this yesterday. It's kind of dancing with the main low. Well, this one's going to continue to kind of make this kind of a track right here. In behind it so this is going to bring a shot of snow a good shot of snow <clears throat> to Arizona and also New Mexico and on its way through it's going to brush southern Colorado with another potentially moderate to heavy snow accumulation through the San Juans Wolf Creek uh, Cuchara all the way down to Taos Ski Santa Fe and Angel Fire in New Mexico then we're gonna get a break in the action and then there's a big storm system right here that's setting up a rich flow into Washington State, uh, Mount Baker, basically north, to Whistler Blackcomb, and then up into Revelstoke, parts of Kicking Horse, and then into and, and down to Marmot Basin. This is going to be an interesting setup, and I'll talk about the rain snow line moving up in elevation with this. <clears throat> and that will spin off another storm system that will affect the lower 48. So the Intermountain West will, will have an active storm track, and so will parts of interior BC and extreme Pacific Northwest. <clears throat> okay, here are my bullet points this morning. So 3.8 to 3.15, long stretch, long duration for this rich flow into the Pacific Northwest and BC. Some of the rain snow line uh, elevations are going to increase, means it's going to get warmer, up to 4,800 feet around Revelstoke, kicking horse pretty high whistler black home you're gonna have a rich flow your rain snow line will increase to about 4,000 feet and then all the while we're going to have these storm systems kind of tracking across the intermountain west my snow timeline really helps you pinpoint when the best uh, powder days are going to be in big sky it's a waiting game now i showed you it's crystal clear up there this morning i don't see much of anything for big sky bridger bowl um Red Lodge until we get to about 311 and 314. That's your next best shot for moderate to heavy snow accumulation. In the Wasatch, you have lingering snow this morning, uh, potentially three to six inches of additional accumulation through Little and Big Cottonwood Canyons. I don't think that's out of the question. Maybe, maybe it's going to be on the lower end of that, but somewhere in there. And then it's that next storm system, 313, 14, and 15, heavy. Similar, almost basically identical in the Tetons. Colorado, very similar. Light this morning, heavy 314, 315. Interior BC, 38 through 315. Some breaks and lulls in between. Um, Pacific Northwest, very similar. Tahoe, 312, 313 is your next best shot. So it's a bit of a waiting game for about a week. In the Northeast, 310. All right, let's drill down on Alta Ski Area up there um, at about 9,000 feet of elevation. So lingering snow this morning, this cranks out another three inches. Could be more up at Alton Snowbird um, as a result. 
of the flow up there. But most places, at least another few inches. The winds, yeah, they're going to increase tonight, tomorrow, up to about 30. High temp today at 21. Tomorrow it's warmer at 27, and then quite warm at 32 on Sunday. So once this storm passes, the temperatures definitely warm up. And then what you don't see is that your next shot, which is around 313, so it's off the chart here. Okay, let me, um, let me talk about the jet stream forecast. So this is, this is a forecast for winds up at jet stream level, up at about 30,000 feet. And I'm looking for the brighter colors here. I'm looking for the reds, the oranges, the tans, uh, because that's, that type of wind is what's guiding the storm systems around. So we'll start at 11 o'clock today. You can see the dip in the jet. Um, we've got our main storm system and then the little trailing low there, kind of working its way south through Arizona and then eventually the Four Corners. All right, here we go. Early on Saturday morning, the final low is working its way through the Four Corners, New Mexico, southern Colorado, and then it moves out into the plains. Then we've got a little bit of high pressure ridging here on Sunday and Monday. This is late uh, Monday right here. Here's early Tuesday, March 11th. Little storm system coming into California. You can see it right there. All the while, we've got this rich flow up there in the Pacific Northwest where the jet is just guiding moisture in. Um, into interior BC. And then look at the little, look at the storm system crossing the four corners here late Tuesday. Uh, all right, here's early Wednesday, March 12th. Storm system moves out into the plains. Now, here comes a much larger storm system. This is midday on Thursday, March 13th. This storm will then move from California with heavy snow into Utah, Wyoming, parts of Idaho, a lot of Colorado. There is early on Friday, March 14th, you're looking at potentially heavy snow. And then that storm moves out into the plains. There's a little kind of trailing area of low pressure that goes south through New Mexico right there. And then we're back to high pressure ridging for about a day. This is Sunday, March 16th. Okay, let's look at snow accumulation over time. Start at 11 o'clock today, and remember on this, the light blues are going to be under 3 inches of accumulation. Your greens are 3 to 6, yellows 6 plus, reds 10 plus. So there's our storm system. All right, here's late today. Um, the trailing area of low pressure takes over through the four corners, snow in Arizona, at the Snow Bowl for sure, Flagstaff, and you got snow in parts of northern New Mexico and southern Colorado. And that's pretty good snow. There's a quick red burst in there. And then it exits. And then look at the parts of uh, Baker up to Whistler, interior BC, Revelstoke, Kicking Horse, down into Marmot Basin. Some of that's going to clip Banff. All right, there we are early Monday. And then that flow, it continues in a lot of those areas with residual snow. All right, here we are early on Wednesday, March 12th. New storm system moving in. Look at California and the Sierra starting to get nailed. And then this is our big storm that moves into the interior. Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, Arizona. Um, all right, here's early on Friday, March 14th. There's late March 14th. That storm exits. And then that flow once again shifts back up into the Pacific Northwest and interior BC. This is early on Sunday, March 16th. <clears throat> okay, my numbers look like this. So um, the rest of today through the 10th, so this gets us through the weekend, uh, an additional maybe three to six inches on the Wasatch. That might be optimistic, but certainly three. Uh, the Tetons, maybe another inch, and that's it. I don't have much of anything through the 10th for Big Sky, Bridger Bowl, Red Lodge. Um, down in uh, Colorado, maybe a residual inch of snow across I-70 and north. Now, the snow you see in southern Colorado, northern New Mexico, and Arizona, that's a result of this little trailing southern low, uh, which will come through and snow today, tonight, and most of tomorrow. And we could be looking at another foot over Wolf Creek with that, and maybe 10 at Taos. So, so potentially some great additional snow. If you're skiing tomorrow, I'd ski down there. Uh, now, up in the Pacific Northwest, 3.8 to 315, rich flow, high rain snow line, but we could be at the mid and high, you know, mid mountain and, and higher uh, 
in a lot of these places, we could be looking at, you know, potentially one to two feet of accumulation up there, 10 to 20 inches, uh, potentially more at Whistler Blackcomb, higher up on the mountain. And then I don't have anything for California until we get uh, beyond this period of 310. Up in the northeast, 310 is probably your best shot with light to moderate accumulation. So anywhere from two to five inches of accumulation, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and upstate New York. All right, guys, we're going to end on the big western map here. <clears throat> and again, some residual snow this morning across the Wasatch, the Tetons, and a lot of Colorado. And then that southern low takes over with good snow for southern Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico. And then it's all about the interior B.C. and parts of the Pacific Northwest, 3.8 through 3.15. Um, and somewhere around 3.13, uh, we'll start to see a bigger storm hit the Intermountain West. All right, guys, take care. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Enjoy the new snow and be safe.